Here we're dividing two and three digit dividends by multiples of 10 with single digit quotients and we'll make a connection to the written method. What's the divisor here? Right, the divisor is 30. We need a multiple of 30 to make the division easy. Let's estimate our quotient. For our estimated quotient, we can go 60 divided by 30, because we know the fact that 6 divided by 3 is 2. 60 divided by 30 is the same as 6 divided by 3, which does equal 2. So our estimated quotient is 2. When we solve the problem, show you a standard algorithm for the solve, we have 70 divided by 30. 30 goes into 70 two whole times. 2 times 30 is 60, and 70 minus 60 is 10. So our remainder is 10. Our check, <clears throat> the inverse operation, is multiplication. So we take 30, multiply it by 2, and then we add 10. 60 plus 10 is 70. So our solution checks. Here we have 430 divided by 60. What's our whole? Right, 430. We need a multiple of 60 to make the division easy. Let's do our estimate first. What do you suggest we use? Did you say 420? 420 divided by 60 is the same as 42 divided by 6, which is 7. We'll use that to help us with our actual division. 430 divided by 60. 60 goes into 430 seven whole times. Notice where I'm placing the 7 over the 1's place. 7 times 60 is 420 and 430 minus 420 is 10. So our remainder is 10. Run a check. We'll take 60, multiply it by 7, and we'll add back in 10. 420 plus 10 is 430. So it checks. What we did again is we took 430 and we broke it apart into 420 and 10. And 420 was 7 groups of 60. Another way to see that. When we put that together, 7 groups of 60 with 10, we do get 430. Okay, it's your turn to try 572 divided by 90. Run an estimate first. So our estimated quotient, did you do 540 divided by 90 to be able to get 54 divided by 9, which is 6. Here's our solution where we solve it. 572 divided by 90, we get 6, because 6 times 9 is 540, and 572 minus 540 is 32. So our remainder is 32. Here's our check. Take 90, multiply it by 6. 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 9 is 54, and we add back in the remainder. and that matches what we were dividing. So our check works. Here's another problem, 73 divided by 50. How many times does 50 go into 73? Did you say once? Because 1 times 50 is 50, and 73 minus 50 is 23. Our remainder is 23. 
73 divided by 50 is equal to 1, remainder 23. We can run a check. We take 1, multiply it by 50, which is 50, plus 23 does give us 73. Here we have 218 divided by 80. Set up the problem. 80 cannot go into 2, cannot go into 21, but it can go into 218. Goes into 218 two whole times. Because 2 times 80 is 160. 8, regroup, 5. 58 is our remainder. Remember, our remainder should be less than our divisor. Here's our check. We take 80, multiply it by 2, which we get 160, and add back in the 58. 8, 1, 1, 218, which is what we were dividing originally. So the problem checks. If we were to estimate the quotient for 337 divided by 80, you would probably end up using 320 divided by 80, which equals 4. So our estimated quotient is 4. We can use that to help us with our actual solution. You can try 4 in there. 4 times 80 is 320, and 337 minus 320 is 17. So our remainder is 17. We run a check. 80. Multiply it by 4. 0. 320. Add back in the 17. Where we get 337. Seven. 519 divided by 60. That's about... 480 divided by 60, which would equal 48 divided by 6, which equals 8. Let's try that. 519, 60, 8. 8 times 60 is 480. When we subtract those, we get 39. Our remainder is 39. Run a check. 60 multiply it by 8. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 6 is 48. Add back in the 39. And we do get 519, which is what we were dividing in the first place.